Please welcome T. Boone Pickens, Chair of BP Capital Management, and Rebecca Jarvis of ABC News. You changed around the scenery, and now everything is new to me. But it looks just right, yeah. It looks just right. Hello, and welcome, Mr. Pickens. Which sector do you think will be the biggest driver in leading large-scale changes in the U.S. energy market? What do you think, Boone? Public, private, nonprofit. What is a nonprofit? <laughs> <laughs> trying to think, where's nonprofit anything in this country? I mean, you know, we're we're based on making profit. I was in Washington. Oh, it's been two or three years ago. And the questioning to me, and I was before some committee, I think it was some, on taxation, and, I, and I, uh, they said something about making money and all, and I finally got a chance to respond. I said, hey, do you, have you ever seen a business that was uh, founded on a basis of breaking even? And the congressman said, I don't know. I said, well, have you ever seen one that was founded on a basis of losing money? The only thing that we're interested in the capitalistic system, which I love it, listen, is it all is about making money. Is that bad? Of course not. You make money, you pay taxes, and, the, and you hire people, and the economy goes forward. It's such, such a simple, wonderful uh, structure that we have in this country. It is. Anyway, private, I said on that. Deal. Private. Yeah. The reason the price of oil has gone down is because the United States has, uh, has added to the production and reserve base of the world, uh, they're the only ones that have added. I mean, we, we put two, two million, over two million barrels a day uh, in, in, we're producing, let's get the numbers first, but there are 92 million barrels of oil is produced in the world every day. And 70% of that goes to transportation fuel. But 92 million barrels a day, we use 18 million. So we're using 20% of the 92. Uh, second to us is China, and they're using 10. So they're about half of us. And, but we still import about eight or nine million barrels a day. So we're producing uh, almost nine million barrels. Well, we peaked on production in 1970 and went down to four and a half million barrels uh, declining to that and kind of bottomed there. And then uh, we came into horizontal drilling and multiple fracks in the, in the horizontal hole. And consequently, we're back up to almost 9 million barrels a day. Uh, we produce more energy than any place else in the world, Saudi Arabia, Russia, wherever you want to go. But natural gas, we are number one and number three on oil, and we're moving up uh, the the Saudis produce about 9.2 million barrels a day. So we're almost to the level of the Saudis, and the Russians are about 9.5 million. So it's an unbelievable change in this country, all for the good of our country. The United States, uh, it's an incredible, uh, to me, incredible statistic, is in the history of all wells, our wells drilled, because not all of them are oil wells, but wells drilled, there have been over five million wells drilled in the world today, and over half of them have been in the United States. You say, well, shouldn't we have depleted all our oil if we drilled more wells than any place else in the world? No, we have de developed technology that has ab absolutely changed the world. For instance, Permian Basin has produced about 40 billion barrels of oil, and now they're saying with horizontal drilling and the multiple fracks that you've got another 75 or 80 billion in the Permian Basin. When oil prices are dropping, when consumers aren't feeling the same type of pinch at the pump that they have previously, how much more difficult is it in your estimation, to sell the idea of natural gas, other alternative forms of energy. Compare oil to natural gas, and on a BTU equivalency, parity of uh, heating value, that it's six to one. So oil at $100 a barrel, same value uh, for natural gas, would be 16. And so you have 
natural gas at four. And I think, my gosh, <laughs> what a steal. It is. I mean, it's very cheap. And the reason it's cheap, for instance, natural gas here, $4, Europe, 12 Asia, 15 We're the cheapest energy in the world in this country. Natural gas by, you know, one-fourth uh, of the rest of the world, say. And oil, we're 10, 15 percent cheaper, and gasoline, we're half the price. How can that happen to us? It did. It has happened to us, and we have the cheapest energy in the world. The conversation started with ISIS. The conversation started with the Middle East, and you brought up the fact that there's a lot of production going on right here at home, clearly a much larger portion of the pie than there was even five, ten years ago. But what, on that very small issue, the SPR, what would you do on that issue? Well, <clears throat> the, uh, uh, the SPR should be worked back in to the... Uh, uh, global supply for oil. So get rid of it over time. Yeah, the, you, 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 you absolutely crater the market if you crowded it in. So you start looking at, let's say that we take 4 million barrels out of SPR, get it back in the market. That uh, would probably take 10 years to ease into the market and not disrupt the market. Okay, but go back to the, the OPEC question. Uh, I'm convinced on buying oil from the Mideast, which is about 2 million barrels a day. There's 17 million barrels comes through the Straits of Hormuz, and we get about 2 million, a little less than 2 million barrels a day from there. I believe some part of that, that oil that comes from the Mideast, that the funds some of the funds that, uh, for that oil get into the hands of Al-Qaeda. Not because the sellers of that oil to us, Saudi Arabia and Qatar and, and Kuwait, uh, that it isn't because they're trying to hurt us. They are paying ransom to keep those guys off their back. And uh, I think you're, when you're buying that oil from over there, you're paying for both sides of the war. And that was my harp 10 years ago. Hey, uh, I may be dumb, but I'm not stupid. I'm not going to pay for both sides of a war. And we don't, we, we don't have to do that. It is not necessary to do that. But the problem is, let's go back four minutes ago, is we have no energy plan. The way that natural gas is collected is through fracking. And you and many others believe this is the viable solution to obtaining the natural gas. There are groups also out there who say this is environmentally damaging. How do you address that issue? I am completely open on any, any energy issue. And you know, but to sit and listen to somebody talk about how fracking uh, causes earthquakes. Get out of here. I'm a geologist. Uh, no, fracking doesn't cause earthquakes. I mean, you're talking about fracking two miles down, and uh, it, you know, it's not even realistic to think that could be the case. And uh, also, there have been over a million wells fracked in Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, New Mexico, and there's no, there's no record of their damaging uh, freshwater aquifers. Elon Musk, he's getting tax breaks here in New York and in Nevada for his renewable energy projects. What do you think about that? A state that will not allow fracking? Care. You're good with that? Well, if that's what they want to spend their money on, it's fine. Is it a waste? Uh, is it what? Do you think it's a waste? You're talking about uh, the electric car, the battery? Tesla? Is that what you're saying? Well, he's, getting, he's, he's pursuing renewable energy projects. And both New York and Nevada are helping to subsidize that through tax breaks. And I wonder if you think that those tax breaks are money well spent. No, but if they want to spend it that way, it's fine with me. Hey, listen, I'm for anything American. <laughs> I take the battery. I'll take wind, solar. I don't care. Just so it's American. I want to get off the OPEC oil. It's where I'm coming from. What do you think is the most likely mix of energy 10 years from now? Okay, you, you've got 
a supply of natural gas for over 100 years. So it will become a transportation, a greater, uh, they'll have a, a greater part of the transportation fuel market, natural gas will. What will it be in 10 years? I, it, it probably, it isn't gonna be over 50%, but it will have the heavy duty trucks is what, what will happen, and that's a lot. If you want to take out OPEC completely, 3.2 million barrels of oil a day, which was what it was in July, you can take it out with the heavy duty trucks. I mean, completely. That will happen. That, that will happen. That will happen. You will have plenty of natural gas, and we will have, uh, uh, and we'll have, actually we'll have plenty of oil in 10 years. We, we have a lot of oil to be recovered in the United States. Now, if uh, this president is bent on, on green, uh, fine with me, but if you do that, you're gonna have to subsidize it. And for instance, the biggest user of wind energy is Germany, and they don't even have any good wind. So it's expensive for them, they did it. Now they're getting ready to dump some of their elected officials out because their electric bills are too high which is exactly what will happen. But we have the best wind. Once more time, the United States is blessed. We have the best wind from Sweetwater, Texas to the Canadian border. I mean, we can put all the power from wind that you would ever want in that corridor right there. It's more expensive, but it is happening. So in 10 years, we will like the global energy picture for the United States. Boone Pickens, thank you. Thank you.